You like my photo? Yeah, but uh, I don't know if it's from China or something. I don't know. It's from Burma. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, we are live on Facebook. Excellent. Yeah, nice. So, John Farrell here. I'm the host of the podcast, The Thinking Part of Life. Let me just get myself set up. There's so many. This is the problem, Marita, when you have two screens. There's just more and more stuff to figure yeah. out <laughs> and organise and listen to. Um, so I'm not quite sure how many people will come on today. It's on my side now. All right. So, Marita, we're going to be talking about the archetypes, Roger Moore's archetypes today. But before we get into the subject, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? We, we, we've obviously done EMF, but... What brought you to EMF? What brought you here today? Uh, what brought me to EMF was the life event that happened to me that led me to the personal development journey. And then my main goal at the beginning was to be a better example of my two children. I have two boys, five and seven years old. And I just uh, wanted to give them the very best version that I can be as a mom <laughs> uh, to them so I can raise them to be honest, good men, well behaved, to have the sense of freedom through life and so on. And then uh, the other thing was to unleash my full potential, be the best version of me for myself first, and to uh, uh, make one of my dreams at that time, biggest dreams uh, through like traveling the world and experiencing more. <laughs> this was yeah, at the very beginnings of the course. <laughs> and then of so, course I got much more <laughs> at the end. <laughs> sounds like, sounds yeah. like you have an exciting life. It must have got more exciting since you did EMF and you went yes. to Tenerife too with the group, didn't you? Yes, yes. I would For love me, to have been there. Yes, uh, actually, this was really very uh, unique experience. And I can honestly say I still am processing all the, uh, thing, all the feelings, all the connections, all the love I felt. And meeting the people in person can never be replaced <laughs> with anything, feeling this vibes, positive energy and unconditional love and connection this was like the most exciting extraordinary time of my life <laughs> yes i i and didn't go peter as I, mean, well I, say, I didn't yes. go but i i i i watched the uh, the first day on on youtube they ran a training so they had the the, the yes, first day was I live was on, on youtube yeah and it's yeah. it's amazing i went to i did tony robbins many years ago me a couple of decades ago and when you have a group of positive people that are that are motivated that are that there's a lot of energy it's it's just this group consciousness almost that starts to that, that you, you it sort of helps you evolve it helps you develop just that energy of being around like-minded people it's um but it came across on the youtube which was quite interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got yeah quite interesting for me maybe, maybe i'll do another one there's there's lots of courses i think there's a course coming uh, there's a training coming up in croatia um there's training coming up in cyprus but anyway that's enough about yeah EMF. yeah so yeah part of <laughs> EMF, it's, it's actually a course it's a six-month course and one of the different and there's there's 13 14 modules in it so there's quite a lot of work i mean to a month sounds like a six months sounds like a lot of time but it's actually there's a lot of work to do in that time. But one of the modules, and we're going to talk about that today, is, is the archetypes that we all have within us. And I just wanted yeah. to, I'll just get a little bit of a, a, a background and then and then we'll talk about the archetypes a bit more in depth. So yeah. it was Carl Jung that, that um, was looking into the, the, the psychology of man and he... And, and and Freud as well, they 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 formulated this 
concept of the of the conscious, the the persona, the the, the personal conscious and the unconscious, the subconscious, having driving parts, and they in in Carl uh, Jung first used the word archetype, and his archetypes were the persona, the self, the animus, the ego, the animus, and the anima, and that's quite sort of psychological talk where in, in what we're going to talk about Roger Moore looked at what uh, Jung did and he brought it down into four archetypes and these archetypes there's something that they're, they're, they're the concepts that we all hold within ourselves masculine and feminine um so so everybody holds a masculine and feminine part M- yeah. males tend to have more dominant masculine parts and women have more dominant feminine parts and that that's a generalization but we have both parts to us i'm just gonna admit karen and we, we have both parts to us with these archetypes um and as we're when we're very young we're immature we have these archetypes we have these immature archetypes and as we develop evolve grow older, do life experience, we start to evolve into these four main archetypes. And these archetypes are not something that's um, from the West. These archetypes have been found through all sorts of cultures, whether it's a a woman sitting having coffee in London or it's a a guy in the Amazon rainforest. They yeah. still have these archetypes. And one of the basis is, is the, the hero's journey. The hero's journey as we go through it, we, we start to evolve these, these archetypes. So, Marita, can you tell us about the four archetypes? There's a few others, but the main four archetypes we're going to talk about today. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. So you can the... go over them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very briefly. So we have the four archetypes. The first one I would mention is the warrior archetype. This is more connected to the masculine energy. And this is basically the archetype that is acting out of courage and um, he's achieving stuff. And as we have this separation for to me, by me, through me, as me, he is the master of by me achieving things uh, and is oriented around this like um, you give him a task or her a task and they just are concentrated on this how they can achieve it and um, yeah main characteristic is the courage to do this uh, and um, of course in today's life also a lot of women has this warrior archetype in the corporate world. As an example, I also work in a a technical position among many men. (laughs) And I need to achieve stuff every day with the team, with the customers. So this helps me a lot when I deep dive in this. And uh, yeah, if you want to add something shortly or I can just go on. We'll just go on. We'll just do the four archetypes okay. now, and then we'll, yes. we'll sort of okay. go, go discuss yes. go a bit further. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> then we have the magician archetype, um, and this is like people that do art, entrepreneurs, visionaries. Uh, they act like in this magician archetype, and they are masters of uh, the non-physical. And they associate more with their inner world rather than the outer world. Um, and um, here, uh, yeah, the magician can just uh, detach from the outside and play in this inner imagination or inner creativity or whatever it is. And it's very good to detach from the outside drama of the world. And this is of course also something that is very useful to acknowledge, to step in when needed. But basically this is shortly the archetype of the magician. Then we have the lover. 
Uh, and this is uh, characterized more as the feminine energy. And um, it is as a guiding thought. Love is not the um, absence of fear, but basically love is the separation of it. This is from Joe Dispenza. I really like this talk. And uh, the lover is actually closest to the state of as me. This is the last state. Uh, those are people that are very connected to the uh, ultimate source of the universe, which is the unconditional love. And many people, <laughs> we had this at the very beginning of DMF, around six or seven, <laughs> uh, they just changed this connection, this type of unconditional love, receiving, receiving, receiving from the parents first. And they got conditioned by their parents, by the society, by school, and whatever comes their way. So uh, here, the characteristics are like connection, harmony, um, To have feelings around <laughs> negative feelings that might rise. And the fourth one is the sovereign. Um, and the sovereign actually is the one that is equal to, let's say, the king or the queen. They uh, lead their leaders and um, they have a connection to their higher self. They also rise above the drama of the everyday or the situation. Yeah, the connection keeps popping. Okay. <laughs> so Karen's, um, Karen's in yeah. Spain on a on a um, okay. A, ah, I saw a, her video. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrific. Uh, so um, he has the ability to lead by vision, the sovereign, as the king or the queen, and also uh, can acknowledge all of the other three archetypes and uh, accept them for who they are. Uh, which is actually a very good characteristic to have or like ability to have uh, because, uh, yeah, many people just judge on many situations, words that were said. And of course, uh, everyone can work on this on all archetypes. And basically, he has no group with opinion of other people, doesn't matter. And he governs. Uh, and he's very wise and independent. Like when a decision needs to be taken, he is taking the leadership and is good in uh, doing what is right in the circumstance that needs to be um, uh, lived. And uh, yeah, those are basically G4 archetypes. Uh, we have all of them inside of us. Some of them are leading, some of them not, depending on many things. <laughs> past experiences or even current experiences, uh, but uh, getting to know those in depth can give us an uh, mastering the balance one, uh, the balance part of the uh, archetypes uh, can give us a lot of power leading our life daily, even in our relationship. I was just going to. I was just going to point out the archetypes are not a personality test. You can't. You know, you can see sort of. You've. Um, you could do a test to see which one's your your dominant one, but it's not something mm -hmm. that we can use to. Um, to create a personality test around it, Myers Briggs is probably the closest it comes to it. But that was never Carl Jung, uh, Jung's intention or, or Robert Moore's intention either. Um. Yeah, so the sovereign, the warrior, the magician, and the lover. I think we all have them within us. Um, and when something happens, one of them will come to the fore. So 
most of the time, because we're walking around asleep, most people, they go into their worry mode. They don't think about it. They just react. Or yeah. they tend to hide away as, as a lover or they they, 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 they they sort of skirt around, come up with the interesting, funny ideas that the magician and or, or or they 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 will they will be the sovereign they'll be the one that sort of takes control of the situation so it, but i think with the archetypes for me it depends on the environment the situation which one will come to the fore we all have tendencies so karen was just saying this is just saying there that she tends to be the magician i think one of the things i just wanted to <laughs> say there was that while these are all masculine sounding warrior lover magician sovereign we have animus and anima within us. So we have both the masculine and the feminine within us. Women tend to, I'm generalizing, tend to have more of the um, animus is a dominant group. So eventually Roger Moore, uh, Robert Moore came up with the, the four feminine archetypes, which are the mother, the Amazon, obviously the warrior. The mother is the sovereign, the equivalent of the sovereign. Harisha is the is the lover, Amazon's the warrior, and then the medial woman is the is the magician. Now the thing is that these four archetypes, that the four feminine archetypes, have the same attributes, the same exhibit the same tendencies as the male one. So it would be confusing to to separate the two. So when I yeah. say or when we say warrior, we're meaning the masculine warrior, but also the, the feminine warrior, the Amazon. As you were saying, in, in business and the corporate world especially, and I see a lot in um, British government, women tend, in government tend to step into the Amazon mode. And that works against them, in my opinion. It yeah. works against them yeah. because what it does is men can fight. Males, the masculine side of men, can fight a warrior because you've got two warriors and they're fighting. And, and that's... That's what men like because they're, they're more comfortable in their warrior mode. Most women aren't, but to, they think to, to succeed, they have to step into their Amazon mode. And the power that women have, I think the power that women have is recognizing that there are times when they need it. You know, if something's happening with your children, then your child, then obviously you need to be able to step into their Amazon mode. But yeah, it's not the way to win, especially against a man because the man knows how to do that. If you come in as the magician or the lover or the, or the sovereign, men are a little bit more, <laughs> I need to find another archetype to step into, and that confuses them a bit. So how else do you think this, this sort of might come up in day-to-day in, in -day behavior? I was just talking there about women in business or politics tend to step into the Amazon because that's what they think they have to do. But what other ways do you, do you see the archetypes appearing in society what well, so the listeners and there's if you're on facebook now um how how might they see the warrior come up within themselves because i'll notice their reactions how might it come up in life just general life yeah. these archetypes uh yeah actually i can speak for myself or what i have observed uh from the knowledge i have so uh yeah, first of all, uh, outside the corporate world, um, I, as a man, need, need to be the lover, of course, the magician for my kids. And the warrior, and the Amazon. And the warrior, <laughs> yeah, when, when needed. Uh, same in work, actually. I'm not only the sovereign or the warrior. Uh, and it's depending on the person, actually. And as you mentioned, uh, the sovereign is, I think, the most hard to get archetype, maybe in the balanced uh, way, because yeah, it yes. acknowledges, it governs all three of them, the other three, and uh, the warrior. Uh, it is very interesting because um, yeah, it's very uh, easy to step in the now state to achieve to do this on like stepping on others, their feelings, whatever, and losing this lover part of us or magician part of us. And actually, we should never forget all four of them. And going into the deep dive of those, uh, this is a work in progress. 
also I myself work uh, now on this. And what I can mention for me is uh, I was more in the lover and magician. And of course, at work warrior and the sovereign, I'm now mastering the sovereign, like um, to accept everybody for who they are, to not react right away. This was also in connection with our module for mastering emotions. And this is really powerful just to hold space for people, to learn to listen actively to them, to respond um, in a way that they feel heard. So yeah, this topic is really, really very fast as uh, knowledge. And I think it's, it's quite hard to be a warrior all the time. Another module that we yeah. do is um, levels of consciousness. And, and um, I'm doing yes. a talk about it this Saturday, actually. but. The levels of consciousness you have by me and, and through me. So through me is is conscious leadership. By me is what we tend to do, and by me is 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 doing things, and that's what the warrior does. And and if you're the warrior yeah. all day, if you have to go to work all day, and you you're fighting all the time to to get things done, it gets quite <sighs> exhausting. Um, yes. Yeah. And I think the big thing about the EMF course and and what we're talking about is that most people are not aware of this. They just go to work. Yeah. They they perceive it work because they're 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 a manager that they have to start you know chasing people and pushing and yeah everything is by me everything is I have to do all this stuff and they go home you know I I, I always remember years ago when I worked um uh, worked in business you come to your holidays and you go on holiday and you get a headache or you get sick for the first or you get a cold for the first couple of days of your holiday. It's almost as the body's sort of like we're in this warrior mode, we're in this Amazon mode, everything's doing, I have to be aware and I have to be ready to, to fight. And then you consciously go, oh, we're on holiday and your unconscious body goes, oh, we're on holiday. <laughs> and then all the yes. problems, come, all the physical <laughs> problems come out and you get ill for a couple of days. So you, you relax. It's, it's really, it's really important to, well, first of all, wake up to recognize what you're actually doing. Because, you know, if, you, if you're at work as a warrior and you're fighting all day, you, you're arguing you've got to you've got to cover your corner you're always making sure people are getting their um their kpis done and the, and the business is done and you're chasing supplies and that and then you go home you need to be able to recognize that there's no point in taking your warrior through the front door because your partner will be there and that's not a good relationship yes so <laughs> But but we all we all do that. I remember a great story. It's a it's it's a metaphor. It's a it's a fable, if you like. Where this guy he he um he went he started work for a new company and he, he um was working with one of his colleagues, um who was was a little bit of a warrior, but it was a little bit more in touch with his his lover and his magician as well. But he invited him around to dinner. So this this new guy went around to dinner with this guy, and he um. They, they they talked about work and and what was happening and the the, the pressures and, and and you know it's basically work and then and then they got out of the car and and the guy the guy um they was taking him to his home to meet the family and and have dinner he went up to this tree and he he sat there for a couple of a minute and just rubbed the leaves of the trees and and the guy said oh so why are you doing that and he he his his response was. I'm bringing all my stuff home from work, my warrior mode or whatever it was, but I'm leaving it on the tree <laughs> because there's no point yeah. me having that mode, that that archetype, that that thinking to walk into the yeah. house because that's not what I want to take home to my family. Yeah. And I remember that story because it's we we tend to you know we we tend to take our stuff with us wherever we go and we react to the environments around us, but we don't react fast enough to going home and we bring all that stuff with us in the warrior mode we step into the house our, our partner the kids the children are not going to be happy if we go into the warrior mode so i think yeah. that's a big part of it is is recognize the impact that these can have so that that's the warrior but what 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 sort of impact do you think the others can have the magician the, the lover the lover, the lover is not necessarily. We we think here about an intimate relationship with the person, but yeah. what we're talking about with an archetype, it's a, it's 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 a concept that 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 a, that a person will step into. Feminine energy has more access to that lover mode. And I don't think that's being a bit sexist because there's lots of men that yeah. that have access to that. It's just 
sadly in society it's not in today's society it's not good to show that but it's essentially people humans are all about relationships well you're not gonna have a good relationship if you're in the worry mode um you're not gonna have a great relationship if you're in the sovereign mode because you have two sovereigns are going to fight each other yes yeah so even males have to have a be able to touch into that lover mode yeah and that, that doesn't mean having a relate an intimate relationship that's just in yeah. the type of relationship we have so what sort of impact do you think these these archetypes would have just in, in in life yeah actually the ability to build the magician archetypes and to step into your inner world uh is uh, very powerful i still remember the realization i had after the first module ruling reality i was somehow always governed by the outer world <laughs> my emotions <laughs> And then this it's was normal. so big for me. Yeah. And I said, wow. And to have yeah. the ability to step inside you uh, and um, yeah, just observe your inner world and give from your inner world to the outside world is a very big thing <laughs> to have. So I think self-development, the first part of self-development for me is self-awareness. Yes. And it's yeah. like, wow. So, okay. Yeah, in the context of my experience, this was a big realization. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was always playing. So before that, what, what, I was going to yeah. say, before that, what would be your archetype? Now that you have a little bit more self awareness and the self of and you're still on that journey, it's not something you switch on and yes. switch off. It's life. Yes. But yeah. how do you think your archetype relationships changed within you? Actually, the thing that's changed is that I'm, as you said, more aware uh, when they should appear, how they should appear. This is a very big realization. Uh, before, I just was acting out of emotion, whatever archetype comes up front. So it was more like governed by emotions, which is never a good thing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So yeah, I had all of them. I'm a very creative person. I like to dream, to travel. Also, I can uh, be a warrior, do stuff right now. It was also uh, very negative for the people around me because uh, not everybody is a warrior when they need to be, like in the same way that I am. <laughs> and once my manager said, you done fantastic, but you push this girl and she is kind of very low now. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, now I learned to be more sovereign also at work uh, because my position is also a level two with team, with customers, I do trainings. So I definitely learned uh, to step into the right uh, archetype when needed. And I am more aware when I should act like a lover, magician, sovereign, or warrior. And I use them both for personal and um, uh, at work, personal life and work life. And this is really powerful, this realization, this deep dive, and this awareness. And it takes uh, time, work. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I think the first part for me is that self-awareness. And yeah. I almost third position myself. So that's, and that's another uh, session module that we do on EMF. But to third position myself and observe myself in a, in a, in a relationship. So if I'm talking to somebody or I have a subordinate or my partner, or I'm talking to my wife, observing what I'm doing, what, yeah. what archetypes can be, is this the best archetype? So it is, it's all really about self-awareness because the archetypes are there within us. This isn't something that um, Roger Moore dreamed up in the 50s or the 60s. This is the hero's journey. And it goes right back to, you know, the Illidiad and, and early Greek times. And, and, and it could be somebody in London. It could be somebody in the Amazon rainforest. It's, yeah. it's inherent in humanity. But most of us are just not aware. It's that stepping it's that self-awareness of what's coming up. And I think the big thing is, is becoming self-aware. And then it, then it, the next step would be actually, is this the white archetype? And I work with a couple of, um, I coach a couple of uh, people that have done EMF. 
and we work on the on on how what archetypes who do i need to be to go into this situation so one of them is is um works with quite a big uh company in asia and she goes into meetings and she takes the archetypes with her this is who i need to be now meetings business meetings generally the warrior is not not the best character to go in with which can be yep. quite because it because it, it can be quite confrontational there's going to yep. be lots of people in the meeting that are unsure they might be in, in a bit more in their lover mode it's not like we have one archetype running we have different levels running simultaneously so yep. if you go in as a warrior and you start shouting or slamming your fist on the desk <laughs> you might get results but they won't be they won't be the results you want and then and in your case there you got the results but you didn't get the the relationship because the the, the woman yeah. that was working with you was possibly in her, in her lover mode more or it, so it, it didn't go it didn't work for her so it, it's really powerful to be able to recognize the archetypes you have within you and then be able to step in and these are the archetype this is the archetype you need to go in with that's not to say that worry is not necessary at times because you know we still have to meet um, demands. It's still the end of the, at the end yeah. of the month for requirements, for figures that we have to reach. And and then with your children, you have to make sure that they understand right and wrong. So there's a there's a balance. I suppose the big thing with with any of this is actually being the sovereign. But I, I yeah. in my experience and in, in training quite a few EMFs. Um, clients and emf people and other people as well what i've recognized is that the sovereign is not necessarily an archetype that you can easily step into because a big part of the exactly. sovereign is experience and yeah. if you're 21 you haven't had as much experience as someone older someone yeah. maybe 31 or 41 or 51 yeah. like me um so the sovereign one of the one of the things that i've found that sits with the sovereign is, is mentorship people that are mentors tend to be very much in their sovereign and the sovereign is not someone who's into their ego they're not someone who's pushing they're someone that's having having that empowerment relationship with another person and to be able to step into a sovereign so i, I i've trained in the last year about 50 people um looking at their different archetypes None of them, mm -hmm. and they're 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 sort of um, thirty to forty. Yeah, one or two might be yeah. in the fifties, but mostly thirty to forty. None of them had the sovereign as the dominant archetype. I found that quite quite fascinating, because yeah. when you're when when you're even having that conversation, or you're you're which which sovereign am I comfortable stepping into? The sovereign isn't the go-to. It's the lover or the magician, and and we yeah. don't. They're not black and white. There's there's obviously there's a there's a balance yeah. between the three in different situations and different environments. I think the big thing is that people, when they get attacked, seem to go into warrior mode, just because that's the way that they defend themselves. And the other the the, the other, but the magician is is the fascinating one. The magician, I I, I worked in hospitality for a long time with at very high mm -hmm. six star level. And when I was interviewing chefs, if if a chef came out with a with a standard menu and he answered all the questions, I would tend not to hire him, because for me at that level six star, I want a chef that's a magician. I want a chef that can produce the food. You know, he's he's not going to turn out something that's horrible, but he's always yeah. looking at different things. You no, know, we 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 um, went into a we were somewhere in Italy. And he went ashore. The chef went ashore, and, and he was—I um, think he, he, it was a fish meal. But he went past the florist. He said, oh, "Oh, what can I do here?" So he—he he, he told me he—he he was in the florist. He's like, "Oh, they're edible. They're edible. They're edible." So the, oh. the guests on the boat had this fish meal, which would have been amazing in itself, but yeah. it was covered in edible flowers. Yeah. So <laughs> that was a chef who knew his trade really well, but really had access to his magician. So. That's that's just it, it's sort of an, another another fascinating. I, I've worked with a lot of chefs. I'm I'm not a chef. I tend to manage front office, yeah. and then and the, and I'm aware of the kitchen. But another chef I work with was incredible. He used to do um, uh, I can't remember the name of the the dessert. Um, it's the one where it's 
it's um it's like a it's a baked Alaska. Baked Alaska, that's right. And uh-huh. what he would do is he would shape it like a like a volcano and then he uh-huh. would have when it went out to the out to the guests on the table, the middle of that um dish, so it would be about that high and it was shaped like a bit and the middle was hollowed out and he would pour the brandy in it. And so what they would do is they would light the brandy as they're taking it to the table. Now his even better because obviously I'm a little bit of a magician as well. And so I quite liked what he used to do. We would go past Stromboli. I don't, it's Stromboli is, is one of the active volcanoes off Italy in the, Car- in, in, in the Caribbean, in the Mediterranean. And so what we were trying to do is to bring this, uh, this baked Alaska flames, you know, flowing out the top and rolling down the sides of this baked Alaska as we went past this volcano. It was that's that's really stepping into a magician. There's there's a little bit of coordination. There's a little bit of the sort of warrior making sure that the, the boat's in the right place. But <laughs> the the actual yeah. whole effect, because the guests don't see all the stuff that's happening behind the scenes. They just see the presentation. Yes. So, yeah, for me, having a chef that's a magician is it was really important. And that in that particular position, if you're if you're working in 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 a, in a restaurant. I'd like to still have to be a bit the magician there, but you're you're stepping more into the warrior because you know, it, in, a, in a in a restaurant, I worked in a restaurant and at a hotel we had a fifty seater restaurant. You've got to get the meals out, so you yeah. you have to step into your warrior mode there a bit. You want to <laughs> sort of be able to express a bit of flair, but yeah. you're more in your warrior mode. Um, that's I know uh, my that, experience uh, of different archetypes. Yes. Yeah. I actually worked when I started in Germany in Heidelberg. I work as a waitress and also I looked after children. And yeah, being also in this uh, area of guests and serving people. Uh, and yeah, you need to be the warrior. And of course, you need to be also creative and loving to the people, especially to Germans. <laughs> and uh, because in Bulgaria, it's quite different, even though, yeah. Uh, it's just different culture and uh, yeah I was just uh, experiencing the same also very interesting we had actually what you mentioned uh, when we were serving ice cream in a bowl and we have put always put this um, that you use for new year I, I, I forgot the word in English this little fire sticks oh, okay Yes, and we used list. to put them and fire this up just before you serve that. So everybody, no matter where you work, what relationship you have with partner or kids or whatever, or whoever this is, uh, yeah, every little bit of the archetypes is so important because we never, uh, we should never forget that we are all humans. We are made of the same dough, and. No matter what the situation is, we need to be humans first and give value and conditional love. This is one of the other things that I learned to love myself first. And I was a very giving person and I am still, but I never love myself really fully. <laughs> and this is really the other important. realization. Yeah, yeah. Really, really also important. in the context, really. yeah, of relationships. The first thing that I remembered after hearing the straight talk for intimate relationships was two C's never make the no. <laughs> and you need to be a whole to be able to give to your partner, to your kids, to your colleagues, whoever this is. And I, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm in, working in business with business teams, the conscious leaders. So I, I, I realized years ago um, that you have a board you have the managers and leaders and they're quite different things and yes but to be a leader you need to be able to to be a conscious leader you need to be self-aware enough to know okay what my archetypes are doing when i need to bring that archetype in but then also and that's internal but then also recognize what's happening externally because if you have a yes. team that you that works for you so you're in charge of a team so you, you're managing a team. You want the best out of all of them. Yes. And, and they're different. Be the, <laughs> and, and, and they're different, but you want you want the best out of, out, out of each yes. one of them. And, and some of them 
and, but then you have to encourage that 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 lover in the person to come out in the context of the job that you've got to do yeah um yeah. and then also being able to get the, the 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 person that's more magician to get them to step out of to, to get to get them to be comfortable expressing that archetype yes because and that, and that that sort of ties in with the conditional unconditional love if you can't love yourself you don't want to express yourself you want to keep it sort of suppressed so you yes. want to fit in and then you 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 become a robot you become part of yes. the system and 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 then then your group isn't going to perform you're not you're not going to have that teamness about it yeah and, yeah. and really with the team you want the team the, the, the a team that's working is going to respect everyone else in the team themselves first but everybody else in the team and yeah. be able to express themselves and be able to, to acknowledge and respect the other person for their 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 talents and be able in to express yes yeah. and, and, and yeah and it's their uniqueness being able to express that uniqueness being able to be comfortable bringing that archetype up for however that relationship that project whatever that, that team is going to work to be able to mm -hmm. get all those parts to fit in and, and and for me that's that of course brings in the sovereign to be able to do that you know the sovereign yes. the leader speaks last as, as Kobe says and and that's that's the sovereign being able to allow no not be able to it's giving the space for everybody yes. to be able to express themselves and that's mm -hmm. that's such that that's such a better, better place for a team to be you still have to perform you still have figures but i think and that, and that and then that then that is the sovereign comes into setting the the vision so yep. that everybody in the team understands the vision and it's part of they, they, they they're not paying it lip service it's part of who they are they they yeah. they are part of the system they're part of sorry not the system they're part of the vision but to be part of the vision how do they fit into it and that's yeah. allowing them to express their 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 archetype this is something that we can teach managers <laughs> on because my personal experience shows that um, a lot of them are mostly in the warrior. And what you just mentioned is very important to be the leader, real leader, to be the example, to hold space for the people. And uh, when you were speaking, I thought of something. Uh, I was always on my very first job as well, a trainer with small teams, a supervisor now as well throughout the years. And I train people, I work with customers with complex situations, cases, whatever. And I was always doing unconsciously, um, giving more, giving value, giving love, or just uh, putting the people in the right environment or conversation to pull up the best of them. And now I can even better master this with the knowledge that we have. But it, of course, it makes your life easier as the manager. Yeah, if you're in your yeah. sovereign because it, it's hard if you're you're, you're you're managing and you're you're fighting people, you're pushing people, you're you're trying to get them to to to, to meet their figures, um, and and they're they're stressed and and basically it's it, it yeah. just it puts the system under stress. Yeah, and I, I think for me the self development, the self awareness. That there's six more than sixty percent of people in hospitals are there because of lifestyle choices or lifestyle diseases, mm -hmm. and it's predominantly stress. And it's stress, not like yeah, nowadays. It's it, yes, it's, it's stress isn't something you sort of switch on and it's like oh I'm going to have a heart attack or I'm, I'm going to uh, <laughs> whatever. It's it's that little drip sort of drip drip yeah. drip over over five ten fifteen years and. It's just that low level stress. It's in the background. It's what I was saying there. You sort of, you get to your holidays and the first couple of days of your holidays, you yeah. have a headache or you, you, you get a cold because <laughs> your body's like, ah, yeah. oh, there's no stress. I can relax. So you, yeah. your unconscious goes into relax. The body goes into relax and you get ill because then it's sort of, you know, it's, it's got to fix all the other parts of it and it, and it catches a bug or it, 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 it yeah, it's, it's really, and people are becoming, I think the important part now in the 21st century and in, in COVID, I think has accelerated this, that people are becoming more aware of this, this, this situation isn't working for me. So people are really sort of, I don't want to work, go to work. I want to work from home, which is yeah. actually more stressful, but they want to work from home because they don't like this, the, the environment that they're in at work. 
So people are becoming more aware of, of this and then looking to, to self-development. Yeah. And, and I'm really, really grateful that I, I ran into Peter Sage. Peter Sage is somebody I met 20 years ago. Um, but the package, wow. the, the EMF package that he's got to get, and, and I've done Tony Robbins and, and um, yeah. uh, some of the other guys that don't come to mind right at the moment. And, and, and you know, what he's doing is, is, is the content isn't that different, but it's the structure of it yeah so it, and it 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 takes six months you know you can't change tony robbins says you can change your habit in a moment but but you can't change it long term you could sort of get out of the bad mood you already get into a good mood but you're going to get back into the bad mood because you haven't changed the environment you haven't changed whatever it is holding you in there yeah and the way that it works the way emf works with peter is that he he goes through these modules which slowly builds us up because you know you're not trying to master your emotions and that's it. It's that's part of it. But but how does that affect the relationships? And then what we're talking about with the archetypes here, okay, this is how I present to the world. The world's a mirror. So my inside, what's happening inside is being reflected outside. So if I'm always stressed, angry, in my warrior mode, I'm going to bounce off people and I'm going to piss them off and they're going to go into their warrior mode. Yes. And going back to... <laughs> English British politics you see the women are, are, are warriors and they're fighting in a, in a masculine world because you know most of the politicians are male and that's the way that they think they have to function and they end up with stress and well you're when you're young when you're when you're 20 25 maybe you can handle the stress and you can push it and you can yeah you know go home on the weekend and do a marathon um, but when you get to 35, it's like, oh, there's more to this. This is this. Yeah. This is just, and, and people, I think the thing, the, the, one of the things that came out of COVID was the fact that we're, we're, we're social creatures. We, we want to have relations with, with other people at, at, at different levels. And it, it, unless the workplace is less stressful, if we go to the workplace and they're stressed, we're not going to have that social connection. There's going to be a connection. It's not going to be the best connection. It's it's just so important now, I think, for leaders to step up. It's fascinating. Yeah. Ten years ago, I was running a leadership course, and we're like, okay, so especially for males, who are the people that we could aspire to or who are the people that we could look up as, as mentors? And you, you've got Nelson Mandela, um, maybe Barack Obama. Uh, yeah. But today, it's like, well, Trump, no, okay, no, Boris Johnson, no, no, maybe not. It's not okay. for everybody. I can't remember the American. Both. So <laughs> yeah. that, that level, and leaders don't have to be you know, leading the country. They can be, you know, they can be a mum looking after the children. That, that's, there's, no, there's no profession that you have to be a leader in. But I think yeah. now since COVID, people are becoming more aware of the stress, the fear that that created. These stress that we're under and they're, they're starting to look at this personal development more they're starting yeah. to what what is out there and that's pretty much the point of my podcast is to is to point people in directions what we do is with peter sage but there is other there is other training there is other self-development you can do out there but as a leader is a, as a manager even you have to recognize that the people that you employ especially the younger generation the millennials coming through people in their 30s they're looking to this more and more and if you're not running it as a manager um you're gonna lose people you're gonna see this turnover i i, yeah. I worked in in myanmar for 10 years and and where i was in a in a hospitality setting for two years a different different um environment different pressures but we had no staff turnover which in in that country is unheard of six months is a long time there's lots of other stresses. There's lots of other strains in that system. But it's so important that you, you, you minimize the staff turnover. And because people are becoming more self-aware, that as a leader, you step up. How can you do that? You actually have to be sort yeah. of a step ahead of them. You really have to be looking at the self-development so that you can become aware of yourself, how you present yeah. to the world. And then I think the leaders are the ones that take that the next step, which is, how can I get the best out of other people? How can I support them yeah. individually? Yeah. And it doesn't need to be a half hour, you know, sort of, you, know, you might do that once every three months where you do a half hour um, 
appraisal assessment. It can be it's a, every it, day, every minute. It, it yeah, be, absolutely. It can be a comment. It's who you're being. Yeah. We have to get out of this doing mode, this by me mode, everything. I have to push everything into this through me mode where this is who I am. I'm, I'm yeah. the guy that goes and there's rubbish, especially because I have a dog. But if I'm on the, on the road and there's glass, then I'll put it in the rubbish bin. I'm not looking for accolades or validation or anyone to say, well done. That's just who I am. So it's, yeah. it's who we present to the world. It's a big yeah. It's, 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 it's a big step, but I think leaders of the older generation, the managers, the lead, the managers of the world, if they don't get this, they're going, they're going to suffer. And the first way is staff turnover. And it's, there's high turnover at the moment because people are looking, they're looking elsewhere. Where do I feel comfortable? It's not about the money anymore. I want a lifestyle. Yeah. I want, I need the money, but you know, I'm not going to kill myself and I have a heart attack at 50 if I have a hundred thousand yeah. or a million dollars in the bank, there's no point. So I need to sort of money, but lifestyle as well. I still remember after Christmas, we began in October with the course. Uh, and I said to myself, one of the things that was like a new year resolution was to achieve the state that I'm not stressed at work. <laughs> And I, at some point, achieved this to the point that I was so relaxed that I just was, wow, is this me or is <laughs> this normal? <laughs> it was but you were still getting the results. interesting experience. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I can do a lot of things also simultaneously, which is not a good thing. But yeah. <laughs> and I just said we, to we, my yeah. master group, we had a little group, Power Minds. And I said, okay, I have changed, but it is so like 36 degrees that I cannot recognize myself. Am I in lethargy or what is happening? <laughs> it was very, very unique experience, <laughs> but it feels much better, of course. <laughs> and you're more relaxed, so you're not as stressed. What's interesting yeah, is Yeah, it was, yeah. When, when you change- I put the intention, the yeah. Exactly. Nothing changes until you change. <laughs> but you have to change yourself first. But it, it's, exactly. it's really important that this isn't going into a relaxed mode where you're not meeting your KPIs. You're not meeting your your um, figures at the end of the month. You still have to meet those. There's just this is just there's better ways of doing it. I think the archetypes are yeah. a really strong way of recognizing who you are and who you need to be. So, yeah, recognizing who you are and who you need to be and then who other people are and, and getting the best out of everybody. And in theory, yes. you should actually get better results, but you'll have happier people yeah. and you won't have the turnover. Definitely. Yeah. I'm happy anyway. to work in a team when I'm acknowledged, the people are acknowledged, and this is very unique, very unique. I, I can experience this also every day. It's a bit sad that it's unique. So it should be... And hopefully it'll change for, for lots of people. But but anyway, yeah. we've come to the end of our time. So thank you, yeah. Marita. Is there uh, any closing statement you'd like to say? Uh, input, if people would like to talk to you, um, it'll be on your Facebook shortly. I'll, I'll send it across to you and it's on my Facebook. Yes, I have a Facebook page. And um, also I post my stuff there on Instagram. Cool. And uh, I will be having also a Facebook web page. And I do have an email to, to use to contact me. Um, yeah, I can say a lot actually. <laughs> we can. But how can that? We hours. only have we only have fifty minutes. I know, and and this is just one little part. We haven't. Uh, there's a whole other part of archetypes that we haven't even touched on yet. Yes, it is. Yes. It, it is so important. But what's the easiest way for people to get in touch with you? If they Marita Vandiva on Facebook, they'll come uh, to you. Uh, yeah, they can join my group or send me an email. Uh, I have a special email for the Elite Mentorship Forum. And they also can call me on LinkedIn. I do have my phone number. So yeah, any, any way is okay for me. <laughs> and uh, no I am glad to help now more and more people every day that I meet my colleagues, my children, my ex, my mom, my dad. So it's really fascinating. <laughs> It's, it's, it's what I was saying. You have to change yourself. And then when you do change yourself, the mm -hmm. people around you change. 
fascinating. Yeah. All right, Marisa, be lovely talking to you. Um, and this Thank is you so John much Trow for the... inviting me, John. No problem. It was great having you on. Maybe we'll have you on again when we when we talk about the second part of archetypes. But exactly. Sometime. <laughs> All right. Lovely talking to you. Thanks so much, Thank everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Have a this is the day. thinking. Bye. The thinking part of life. We'll see you same time, 9 a.m. next week, 9 a.m. British time next week on this channel or on this Zoom call. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you.